Hi everyone, I'm Jan from Pins and Needles and Sew It Online. We have been asked to make 10,000 masks for our local hospital here in Cleveland, Ohio. The whole world needs masks. We are looking to challenge to, for us to be able to make over a million masks. So I am going to have a link here where you're going to be able to go get the pattern and the instructions to be able to make this mask, but I'm first going to show you how to do it. Everyone needs this. Every hospital needs it. Every nursing home needs it. We all need to get to work. You all have fabric at home. This is going to bust that stash. We don't need much. Let's go over it. So, first of all, the first thing that our hospital has wanted is they want a mask that is two colors. First thing. So it's got to be a reversible mask. One in a light color so that the nurse would put it on first and second when they use it again, if they use it again, they would use the other side. Now when looking at all the patterns online, they just made it very confusing and a little bit harder, I think, than what it needed to be. So we've made about 25 of these to get the pattern down to nothing and it's, it looks like nothing, but to be able to do it as easy as possible is what's important. Remember, they're probably going to throw these away. So therefore, your perfection that you would do in your quilt making and your garment making is not necessary here. So let's take a few shortcuts and get it made quickly. I'm well aware that these aren't protection 100%, but they are what our hospitals are asking for. So let's just do what they need because it's the best they can get at this present moment, okay? They have asked for wire to go across the top. They have asked for a pocket to go in between that they could put tissues or whatever they have for a little bit more protection for them. They have asked for one side to be one color and one side to be the other color. They're not asking for much. So then these will just go on and fit right around the head. You want this to be tight here, and you want it to go underneath your chin. Believe me, we've made enough of these and had enough discussion on how to make them easier that I think we got it down. So again, the pattern will be below this, this that you're going to be able to go on and print out your own pattern. But let's get to work and make one. What it really is, if you look here, is I am just taking many layers of fabric, and I am drawing the pattern out that I am going to give you. One of the pattern, Mask A, is this size. Mask B, if you look at it, is just a little bit longer because that will be the back. So let me show you. I've cut them out. So I have got one, but can you see now how the one side of the mask is about an inch longer than the other side of the mask, otherwise they're duplicates. Again, you're going to be able to go to the bottom of this video and you're going to print out your own pattern. But let's sew them together because I think I've got some tricks for you to make it a little easier. So the first thing we're going to do is I made some that are four different colors just so I could be sure that you could see them online. So the first thing we're going to do is just do the bra cup oval here. So here and then so on this side. That's going to give it a little bit more dimension for the nose. Remember, some of the doctors are not, are, are different sides than some of the young ladies. So we need to make sure that we're taking care of everybody. We know that this pattern does. So the first thing I'm going to do is to just sew right on down my seam here on my cups. So I'm going to take just the edge of my presser foot and do a straight stitch. Nothing fancy. Straight stitch does it for most of this. Let's go ahead and pick one. Okay, so all I need to do is just sew along this curve. I'm going to make the next one from the other side. Come right next to me. I'm using the edge of my presser foot as my guide, or I can do about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That's all that I'm doing, coming on down here and reversing so it stays together. Cut my threads. Lift up my presser foot. I'm going to take just a second, and I asked for you that no perfection needed to be made, but I'll tell you what, it'll be more comfortable if we just take a couple little slits. I've made these on sergers, and they're very much easier because you don't have to do all this slit stuff. 
but I thought we needed to get everybody involved first before we go into specializing in it. So the next thing I'm going to do is to just turn in the edges. So I'm just going to turn this one in. Just your normal quarter of an inch. And I will open this one up and come on down there. Come on to this side, turn this one in. Pretty fast, really. Then I'll come on down and bring this one in. I'm only using four different pieces of fabric for the sake of showing you on a video and making you understand what I'm doing. Okay? So all I did was sew them together, no big deal. So all I've done is sew a piece right here and I finished that edge and finished this edge. That's as far as I've gone so far. I've done the same exact thing on my other piece. So now what I need to do is to put them together and I'm just gonna sew across the top and sew across the bottom. You might find it easier to start at the center, leaving one seam allowance to go one way and one seam allowance to go another way. Then, all we're going to do is sew it down. Still using the edge of my presser foot, a quarter of an inch. You don't need much of a seam. Reverse is important. Make sure this thing's going to stay together. You don't need anything pulled, okay? So I've sewed on one side. Now I'm going to come to this side and I'm going to sew that. Look what I did. Can you see that all I've done is sewed from here to here. At this point though, they have requested us to put a little bit of wire there. So how are we going to do that? We need a little bit of any type of a wire that we can put in there so it will bridge across the nose. So we of course know that nobody's got wire at home. So we went out and nobody can get into a store either. So what are we going to use? We've opened up paper clips. We've used twist ties. Anything, they found me some garden wire, still don't know what that is, but they found it for me. So then all we want to do is basically do a zigzag over this wire. That's all we have to do, and about three inches of wire is all we need. So we're going to put the wire on here, and just do a zigzag, and do it a wide zigzag so you don't hit nothing. Just a regular zigzag right within your seam. So all I'm doing is going uh, in within the seam also, you understand. So it's on the outside of the seam really. And all I'm going to do is to zigzag over that. So it's almost like you're overcasting that edge, but you've got a wire over it too. So go to a real wide zigzag so you have no worry about breaking your needle. The, the smaller paper clips work better. You don't need anything thick. So whatever you have, if you have some jewelry wire, do it. If you don't have jewelry wire, then do what you have. If you don't have anything, you know what? I bet you they'd like a mask without the wire than anything else. Okay? So we got the wire in there. So now what I have to do is to sew the bottom of my mask. Put your side, seams together and sew from one side to the other side. You with me? So all we're doing is sewing the bottom of the mask, mask now, but let's go back to a straight stitch. And side of my seam, side of my presser foot, go right on down. And we're making um, 
Your first one, believe me, the first one we took forever because we kept changing it. Do you see what I have now? So now what I've got is I've got my wire in exactly how they wanted it. I've got my mask. One side is a little bit bigger than the other side. And I'll show you why. What I have to do now is to come on in here and I just have to completely reverse it. Again, we could put batting in it. Go ahead if you want to. You could put interfacing in between. Go ahead if you want to. But we'd rather have two masks than one perfect mask. Does that make sense? So now what that did is that wire is just right in there. It's not going to move any place. It's just in there. And however they bend it around their nose, it's going to work fine. Again, it looks goofy to you because I'm using four different pieces of fabric to show you what I'm doing. I wanted it to show the seam here down the center. Do you see what I'm doing? Okay, so you aren't going to. You're going to use these two to match and these two to match. Again, what I would like you to use is a light color and then a dark color. And then the nurses will know to use the light color on their face first and then turn it to the dark color the second time they use the same mask. I assume these are all going to be thrown away, so um, just remember that. So now all I have to do at this point is to turn this over. So all I've got is a raw edge here, so I'm going to turn it over right on down to meet my other seam and stitch this down. That's going to be my casing for my elastic. So all we're going to do is stitch across it, reverse it, make sure that baby is sealed in good my threads. It does not hurt to go across that twice. All I did was make this a completely, so this is a finished edge and this is a finished edge, but I have a pocket right here so they can put whatever they choose in there. So they're talking about paper towels, they're talking about tissues, they're talking about whatever. This is just going to come on down again. Look at it. All I got to do is bring that down and what that's going to do is give me my little casing for my elastic. and stitch right across there. Good. So now, let's go, my case facing is here. So now I'm taking six and a half inches of elastic. I'm using quarter of inch elastic. I've had people use ponytail ties. I've had people elast, uh, eighth inch elastic, circle elastic, anything you have is what we need to use right now. We're going to take a loop turner now. You got one of these in your house? These are loop turners. You probably have one from when you used to sew and put elastic through. It's got a little hook on it. And then this closes up. Got it? So that's going to pull that elastic right through for me. Now the old fashioned way, or the old way, the old tried and true way, is going to be to use a um, safety pin. Hope I know you got one of those. No one's prepared for this. So all I'm going to do is stick this right through the center. And if it doesn't go one way, I'll tell you what, it goes the other way. It just depends how those seams in there were. You remember putting them in. Let's go this way. Every one I've done, I've had to switch and do the opposite way so that it can go in there in between those seams. Cut for a second. Okay, now you don't have to. Okay, so now I've got it pulled through. I'm going to go and I'm going to latch on to that elastic. Can't see, just hook it through there. All right, close it. Be smart enough to close it and bring it right on through. And that's going to help you get that elastic right on through there. Following me? You can do that with a safety pin. You do not need to have one of those tools, but I thought if you had those tools, you might want to get it out. At this point, I have my elastic pulled through. So the hardest thing I have to do now is to go like this and tighten it. It would be easier to use eight inches of elastic and then, and then cut it off, but elastic is not available. 
So at this present moment, most stores are sold out of elastic. I have ordered thousands of yards of elastic and expect some of it to be coming in about the 28th. So uh, hopefully, us sewers, we've got a lot of elastic in our stashes. What I'm using is a three-step zigzag here if you have it, just something to learn. What I'm doing is its needle is going three times across, and that's going to hold that elastic stronger than any straight stitch or zigzag ever, ever, ever could. It's one of the first 10 stitches on most everybody's sewing machine. If you want to look for it, it does a step, a step, a step, a step, a step, a step. But it's a great little thing to do. I need to do that on the other side, and voila, I have my mask made. So it's all done one side or the other. Well, let's just put it in. It's only going to be one more second. Okay, so what do I have to do? I'm going to use my little... Loop turner. I'm going to put my glasses on. Now if you have a serger, it's a lot easier. I decided to do the sewing machine version first because I can get everybody sewing. Even our kids need to do these and they're simple and we can. Okay, so now all I'm doing is pulling it through, right? Just like I showed you. Get it through, put it underneath the sewing machine. Your three-step zigzag is a width of four, and take your stitch length and move it down to zero, maybe a, a, between zero and one. So it's basically bar tacking and just going across that elastic. Remember, the elastic needs to hold probably approximately two to three times for it to even be used. It's not going to be used too much more than that, but having it fall apart is worthless. So I've just stitched it across. And I have my whole guy done. So now, all that goes on is this goes around the ears. We've tried this on men. We've tried it on women. We've tried it on everyone. Do you see how it cups down here, how it cups here, and how on the sides there is no gap? So they've looked at it all. That's what they want. The little piece of wire is probably your hardest thing and hard is fine to be able to find that wire, but I bet you got something in your house that you can use. The elastic is going to be able to go all the way around and make it super easy. Now let's say we run out of elastic. Don't stop, because a tie works just as well. So what I found out about the ties is we made it the same way. You want about a 16, so we just took a long piece of tie and, okay, so it's going to tie up here. And then tie here. Got it? But what I found out is you need about 16 inches up here. 16 inches, 8 inches, 9 inches from here to here. So this just needs to either be tied ahead of time. Don't leave it for them to tie. Tie it ahead of time or just use one strip and just have it go from one to the other. This one we just made up real quick just for people to see. But in practicing with it, they don't want to have to come here, tie it. They just want to do one tie, right? So that's got to be secure. And it needs approximately 16 inches from here to here. So rather you tie it, you sew it together, or I would just do one string through here, come on up and one string through there, and, and make sure that we got 16 inches on this end. I was just in the hospital with my daughter having a baby the other day, and I watched these masks go on. So they sometimes they're in a hurry. So let's make it as easy on them as possible. So if you don't have elastic, please just make a string. I bet you got some bias tape. You won't even have to turn and turn it. I bet you could make some strips of fabric, <coughs> fold it over, sew it, put it through there. You don't have to turn it and, and all that. All we need is a piece of fabric sewn across so, so that it can get in your tie and tie it. So I want you to click below and you will get the pattern. And let's get making these. We want to go for one million. Let's join our group and show each other what the sewing community can do for our world in a time of trouble. Join us, 
have fun with it, and let's teach someone else our craft of sewing. Hope to see you real soon.